do you make a witch's brew? How do you lie on a bed of nails? Ouch! And how can you eat a mouse? How can one be two? Even right? in your befuddled state, one cannot be two. I know about these things. One yeah. is not equal to two. It never can be, never will be. Uh, yeah. Carol, you may know about maths, you may not know about this how. Fred, yes. now then, hold out your finger like so. Close your eyes. Now then, tell me, by feeling alone, how many marbles have I got in my hand here? One. Excellent, Quite correct, Fred. Fred. OK, keep your eyes closed. Fred, tell me again, how many marbles are in my hand? Two. Well done, Fred. Excellent, OK, open Fred. your eyes. Right, cross your fingers like that. Right. Okay, keep your now close your eyes again. Right. Now tell me, Fred, how many marbles are in my hand? Two. Open your eyes, Fred. <laughs> Look, I felt two. Uh, how can one be two? Yes. You want the explanation? How come, yes. Well, your brain is geared up to expecting your fingers to be laid out in that order, okay? And when you do that, it actually confuses your brain. Let me show you. When your fingers are crossed and you touch a marble like so, what your brain actually thinks it's feeling is a marble on that side of that finger and a marble on that side of that finger. Your brain is confused and it thinks that one is two. And that's how one can seem to be two. Ingenious. Now, you've seen the pictures. You've seen the old movies. Now take a look at the real thing. But how do we get sepia? You know that lovely browny, purpley colour that you see on old photographs? Well, we get it, in fact, from this little chap, whom you probably recognise from your budgie's cage, the cuttlefish. And we can see now what he looks like in the deep. You have to be very, very careful here not to disturb the cuttlefish inside this tank. And I'll explain why in just a moment, because it's the answer to the whole how. It's an incredibly clever little creature, has amazing powers of camouflage, like a chameleon. And also, when it's really upset, when it's really disturbed, just like an octopus, it lets off a cloud of inky fluid, which confuses its assailants and allows it to escape in that inky fluid. In fact, that's why that tank is a little bit murky, because one of those little creatures actually let off his inky fluid a little bit earlier. Now, the ink, in fact, comes from an ink sack, which looks just like one of those. And to make sepia, and the Romans first discovered how to do this, what you have to do is to crush the ink sack in a bowl and add some liquid to it and you will produce sepia. There is, of course, a much easier way of doing that and that's actually buying it in a small <laughs> jar. But that's how you make sepia. And how do you find it? The answer lies in the sea. How do you lie on a bed of nails? Very carefully. <laughs> Correct. Boom, boom. <laughs> now, lying on a bed of nails has a certain magic, a certain mystery surrounding it. So I thought I would investigate further. I have designed and built a classic bed of nails, as you see. I've even painted it. And we are going to demonstrate just how simple it may be to lie on that bed with the help of a friend of mine, Gareth. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Not just yet, though, because first of all, we have to consider the factors which have gone in very carefully into the design and the build of this particular bed. Now, first of all, obviously, I had to select the correct nails, and I have chosen very long, sharp, cold stripes of steel with a point on the end. Pretty sharp. And secondly, you have to consider how many nails should go on the bed. So that needed an experiment. Now, here we have some soft, squidgy things, apples and a number of nails. First of all, I thought, what if I asked him to stand on one nail? I'm not not very good. That would go straight through your foot. What about two nails? 
Uh, not very good either. What about lying on four nails? Uh, getting better, but I still think it would hurt. With the soft, squidgy thing, the apple on ten nails. Uh, it's starting to bounce off. And on a whole clump of nails together. Straight very up. safe indeed. And that's safe, yes? Yes, and that was as far as I went with the experiments, really. <laughs> so I think now it's time to test the rig. To take it further. So, yes, if you could drag him over. Gareth, please. Gareth. Uh, it's serious? going to be very simple, honestly. <laughs> so. They're not particularly clustered, these nails, are no, they? No, well, not Thank as you. clustered as the ones I tried the apples on, no, but you I don't like damaging apples. You lower yourself very evenly yes. down. Teddy's here, hold, too. Hold tight, I'll lean back. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Very, gently, yeah. very, very yes. gently. Very, very gently. Yes, here's the pillow. Want to go a bit further back? Do you want the pillow? Yes, please. Right, use your arms to support yourself. Right. Oh, okay. yeah, there's That's the better. pillow. Tell you what, let me just get comfortable. See, ah, you think of every last comfort. Oh, it's quite nice, actually. And here's Teddy. There we are. <laughs> yes. Now you could fall to sleep on that, couldn't you? Not only that, you could take all. the weight of a fully grown man as well, actually. Yeah. But you go on. Go on, then. I don't think so. Is it comfortable? Yeah, it is, actually. It's it is. all right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. not bad at all. Getting off okay. is, a, yeah. is a knack in itself. Yes. Okay. Very now, the number of nails in. normally is a thousand <coughs> it takes. No, no, oh, no. well done. <laughs> a thousand to support a person, and I think I only put 200 on there. Hey. So you did pretty well. <laughs> now, don't try this at home. One, it's very expensive to build it, but secondly, if you don't do it properly, you might hurt yourself. And that is how you can lie on a bed of nails. I must admit, I have a bit of a dry mouth after that. How? Maybe it's time for a refreshing drink. And this how? How do you make? A witch's brew. <laughs> Good, eh? That's Lovely. beautiful. Yeah. Carol, Fred, you'd like to join me oh, in a witch's oh, brew? Yeah. Love to. Oh, yeah, very, very, very kind of Pass you. Pass it on to Carol if you'd be Carol, so you very are. kind. Thank you Absolutely so delicious. much. Yeah. A nice green one, I think. Oh, Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, amazing. you're very good help. Actually, Cheers. I wouldn't drink that, and I'll explain why. Now, you've probably seen this effect in horror movies of this perpetually boiling drink, but how is it done? Well, the answer is carbon dioxide. Now, this is carbon dioxide, seen here in a frozen solid form. Now, water, if you freeze water, it turns to ice. Heat it up, it turns to water, the liquid. Heat it up again, and it turns to steam. Whereas carbon dioxide has no liquid state. It'll turn from a gas to being a solid if you freeze it down to minus 78 and a half degrees C. Now, because it's warmer than that here in the house studio, it's actually turning straight back into being a gas. So you can't see that very well, but I can demonstrate. Now then, if I take a glass of coloured water and pop in a couple of pellets of CO2 in its solid form. Can you see the bubbles of CO2 mm, yes. rising through the glass? That's amazing. Now, but look what's happening. When the gas breaks the surface, it looks boiling hot. It's not actually boiling hot. It's boiling cold because the gas itself is still cold as it turns from frozen. And what it does is chill the moisture in the air here, which turns it into cold fog. And because ah. cold fog is cold, it'll actually fall rather than rise like steam. So that's how you make a witch's brew. But one other thing, actually one other thing I must show you before I move on, and that is that if you were able to refreeze um, this gas back into a solid, it's very useful doing that because you get an awful lot of gas from a small amount of solid, which makes it very easy to transport around. So if I actually pop some pellets into this water here, I can show you how much gas you actually get from a solid by putting this balloon over. Yeah. If What's I hold it happen? tight, oh, it's blowing it, up. it should inflate the balloon. Can you see how much you get out? Isn't that good? That's brilliant. Don't let it burst, please. I shan't, I promise. And using CO2, carbon dioxide, or dry ice, as they call it, that's how you make a witch's brew. But I have another part to this, How? <laughs> how would Frankenstein <laughs> do the washing up? Join me in my kitchen laboratory and I shall demonstrate. Now then, in this bowl I have CO2 pellets, dry ice pellets, okay? And in this bowl I have some water containing uh, washing up liquid. What happens when I combine the two? Let's find out. Whoa, hey, look at that. What you've got is bubbles full of cold fog. And I have to thank the uh, Catalyst Museum in Runcorn for this how, and for telling me how Frankenstein would do the washing up. <laughs>
And while we're in the kitchen, how can I eat a mouse? Don't eat a mouse, Freddie. Don't. A lovely. No. Soft. No, don't. Succulent. Pink. No, you mouse. Must... Pink. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're not real mice, of course. How can I eat a mouse like that? The sort of uh, delicious confectionery mouse ah. that a Victorian child would love to have found in his or her Christmas stocking. Well, before you can eat them, you've got to make them. And I'm going to show you how. This is a culinary how involving enormous dexterity and knowledge, which is why I'm doing it. <laughs> you begin, oh, it's, there's a lot of complicated ingredients in this. 250 <laughs> grams of icing sugar, which I've got in there, and one egg white, which you add. And now what you do, you see, is you mix the whole thing up. <laughs> it's not just a matter of, <laughs> of just mixing it. Yeah. It's a matter of getting absolutely the right consistency. It's not. But the that's sort of white. How do you get it pink? Ah, I'm so pleased you asked me that because to get the actual colouring, yeah. you need to add some cochineal. And we know what that is, don't we? Oh, yeah. we do. Crushed, Crushed beetles. beetles. Indeed, yes. <laughs> is that Very a dear friend of how. Just a drop of that. And already you can see a mouse like colour <laughs> appear. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are. That's basic technique taken care of, no problems at all. And what you are left with is one that I knocked out a bit earlier, and it looks a bit like that. Right. Now, here comes the second stage of the enormous skill. It's just getting that lump into sculpting a mouse-like shape. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. you are sculpting. So when you've got something it's more like a rabbit to me. <laughs> when you've got something that looks vaguely... And remember, I'm working under difficult conditions. <laughs> when you've got something that looks vaguely mouse-like, you'll need a couple of ears for him. Almonds, I think. What? He will need some eyes. <laughs> a couple of silver balls. Party. OK? <laughs> this is his body here. Fred, Fred, and I'm... he will need a tail. You can use licorice or you can use a piece of string. String is not a bad idea because it means you can then pick him up afterwards and the string obviously goes Fred, in yeah. his, How in his hind quarters. How come the mice in the cage look so much like mice <laughs> and that one yeah. doesn't? That looks more like a pig. <laughs> Pig. This is very hurtful. <laughs> well, of course, normally I would create masterpieces like this in my kitchen. And here's one I prepared <laughs> earlier. <laughs> so, how can you eat a mouse is actually very simply, you just pick him up and very delicately, because he's a nice little chap, bite his head off. Oh. <laughs> and that's how you eat a mouse. How can you see like a giraffe? Easy, Carol. See like a giraffe. Oh, it's easy, Fred. You need a really long a neck. A really long neck. And to show you the answer to this, how I need my makeup back, because I've got all the stuff I need. Is that here. No, 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 no. I don't want any of that. I want these two mirrors. All you need is you put one at the top, one at the bottom. Now what happens? You look in at the one at the bottom, and you can see what's going on through the one at the top. And this is the basis of a periscope. In fact, this is a periscope, mirror at the top, mirror at the bottom. What happens is the light comes in, hits the top mirror, gets reflected straight down to the bottom mirror and straight out from there to my eyes. So if I look through this, I can see Gareth. Yeah, Hello. Carol, I can see your eyes at you, the end of the periscope. Absolutely. And if you use one of these, you can see over very high walls, you can see over crowds, you can see over all sorts of things. But forgive me, mm -hmm. what's that periscope got to do with, with a giraffe? Well, in your little brain, Freddie, yeah. what knowledge have you about giraffes? You can see over trees and things in the jungle. Exactly. So would you like to come with me to our little jungle? The jungle? Oi! Mm -hmm. Mm. Look at that eucalyptus tree over there. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. There's another one over there. You know, being a giraffe can be a real pain in the neck. Oh, that's better. And that's how, with the aid of a periscope, you can see like a giraffe. And that's... How? For now! <laughs>